Honest Advent. We're kicking off the series this morning, and I'm excited about it. Um, you know, a lot of this, this week, actually, I gave, a, I gave one of these books away, Honest Advent, and um, the lady I gave it to, she said, well, what does Advent mean? And I said, that's a good question. I didn't know, <laughs> you know until just a few months ago. Uh, Advent was not really a part of the church calendar. Or, you know, I, I, was, when I, was, I was raised Catholic. I don't remember much about it. You know, I was kind of a, I was one of those kids that got in trouble a lot, so I didn't listen. And, you know, and I remember the candles came out during Christmas, and I, know that, I remember the Advent calendar. But, um, you know, it wasn't up until a few years ago, a family here gave us an Advent calendar for our son. And, um, you know, each day you peel back the calendar and there's chocolate. And so, you know, my, he had it all eaten within like, I don't know, three days uh, last year. Where, where he's pacing himself this year. I think he learned his lesson. And, uh, and, and so he's only like a few days ahead. But, um, <laughs> but I told her when I gave her the book, I said, Advent, it's a Latin word that just means coming. Like expectancy, arrival. And in Advent, it's this ancient Christian tradition where they would prepare themselves for the arrival, for the coming of Christ. And so there's this beautiful uh, different Advent calendars and candles and all these things that um, the church has passed down for centuries. And so this, this series uh, is kind of complemented with the book, Honest Advent. And so there's a reading every day that you can do from now until Christmas. But uh, our theme verse, we're going to just jump right there, is in Isaiah chapter 9. And so we spent a few weeks talking about this verse uh, in our last series. But I want to read it to us, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. And this is a really popular Christmas verse. You know, and this, this is a, but for to, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. Somebody say given. He's a gift. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And so I want to talk about, we talked about Wonderful Counselor for a few weeks, and so as we go into this Christmas season, I want us to look at those different titles that was given to Jesus thousands of years ago. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. But today, I want to draw your attention to the beginning part of that verse. That to us, a child is born, a son is given. And so this is like the time of year, really, where if, if, if you're like me, you don't do a lot of gift buying. It's, I, don't, I don't like going to the store just shopping, you know what I mean? Like, like when, I, when I go to a store, I know exactly what I want. I I've typically know where it's going to be. You know what I mean? And I am in and out. But, but this is gift-giving season. It's Christmas season. It's, it's, you know, no matter what this season means to you, you know there's going to be full of presents. And you're going to get to go and, and, and uh, you know, buy things for your family and your friends. And what I want us to see about this verse, just kind of draw out of it, is, is I really want to look at for a moment the first thing that we all do with a gift when you're given a gift. You try to figure out what it is first, don't you, right? I mean, if it's under the tree, I'm really bad about that, okay? I'm really bad about that. Like, like two, I'm wearing my Christmas gift this morning, actually. Uh, my, they, they came in. Her, my, my wife has to, like, hide things and, like, buy it with different money that I don't see. And, you know, because I, I don't, I'm not a big into surprises. But, but the first thing you do when I was growing up as a kid, my mom would put a, a present under the tree. I tried everything I could to figure out what, what it was before opening it, right? You look at it. You know, the first thing you do with a gift is you look at it. You size it up. You know, you shake it a little bit. You see how heavy it is. You try to figure out, like, you know, what, is, what all is in this gift? And that's what I want to look at this morning for just a few moments. A gift tells us a lot of things. It tells us specifically something about the gift giver. It tells us the gift itself has meaning. And then the person receiving the gift. So I want to look at the three sides of this gift this morning. The gift, the giver, and the giftee. And I think if we took a theme from Genesis to Revelation and, and, and we to, to boil it all down, it would be that God gave this incredible gift in his son. And it's a gift that, honestly, we could spend our entire lives trying 
to grasp our minds around it. And when somebody receives a gift, you know, there's different reactions to it. You know, have you ever given a gift and somebody didn't like it and you could tell? You know what I mean? Like, like, like or, or you got a gift and you spent a lot of time researching it and you thought this is the perfect gift. And then they open it and they're like, nope. You know, Asa, when our son was two, we, we, he, had, he got so many gifts. Like it was a, some of the gifts I put in the garage and re-gifted the next year. Like he got so many gifts. But he would open up these gifts and everybody would be watching him open these gifts. And he didn't want what was inside. He just wanted the box. So he would take it, put it out, and then just get in the box and play with the box. But there's different reactions to when somebody receives a gift. And so for a few moments, I want to just look at that. What is in this gift? What does it mean to us? Paul wrote this in 2 Corinthians. He's talking about this gift, chapter 9, verse 15. Thank God for this wonderful gift. He said this gift is so valuable that language can't adequately describe this gift he said it's too wonderful for words that there's really no way to describe what all we received in this gift in this time of year that when we celebrate the arrival of a small child of this baby that was born what that meant for me and for you and the first part I want to look at is I want to look at the giver because a gift tells you a great deal about the giver the person giving the gift. And if it's a really good gift, you know that that person did some research. That, that person found out some things about you. That person tried to, to do their very best to get a gift that, that you would like, that you would enjoy, that you would use. And according to this verse, Isaiah, you know, chapter 9, verse 6, is, is, is we see this, this, you know, this part of Christmas that I don't think about a lot. We think about the gift we celebrate the gift, but what about the person that gave the gift? It says that God the Father gave this gift in his son. And so the, the gift that he's giving, and when we look at this gift in detail, it's going to tell us a lot about the giver. I think I want to just give you a few things, just three. I think the first thing that we see in this gift is it shows us, it tells us about God's grace to the world. That if, if there was two things that John used to describe Jesus in John chapter 1. That Jesus brought a lot of things when he came on this planet. And, and what's amazing to me is when he came, it was very uneventful. Nobody knew. who didn't make the headlines. Right? He wasn't born in Jerusalem in the, in the city. He was born in where, Bethlehem, right? A little, the house of bread, small town. Nobody really knew where it was. He wasn't born in a penthouse suite. He was born in a stable, very quietly. A few shepherds knew about it, some wise men. A king was nervous. But it was pretty uneventful. And wrapped in this extremely, like at the time, uneventful, very small gift was something very powerful. John said that, it, that this gift that Jesus was full of two things. He was full of truth and grace. And so what does that mean, grace? That, that this gra and who was it given to? Was it given to the church? You know, there's a theory, there's some long church history that says that, you know, uh, uh, Calvinism, five-point Calvinism, right? That's a theological term if you want to go deep there. It says that maybe this gift was just given for the church. That it wasn't given for the whole world, but it was given for those that God is going to choose. And I think it was. But I also think it was given for the world. And I don't think it was given for a specific type of person, a specific race of person, a specific nationality. But this gift that came from heaven, that came from above, was God's gift and grace extended to the entire world. And when the gift came, I want you to see this. When the gift came, Isaiah is writing thousands of years ahead of time. And, and nobody really quite knew what was going to happen. And when John 1 talks about Jesus being full of grace and truth, and, you know, there, there is this, this gift arrived, according to history, when there was about 400 years of silence. And, and so, so there, people were getting a little, I think, paranoid. I think people were getting a little anxious. And, and God gives this gift that he extends grace to the world. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for grace. Mercy is not getting what we do deserve, right? 
Mercy is I'm guilty. I ran the red light and I went to court and the judge just decided he was having a good day this morning. He was going to let me go. Don't have to pay the ticket, right? That's mercy. But grace is when a gift shows up at your door and you don't, where, you don't know where it came from or who, it's, who bought it. But it's an incredible gift that you don't even feel like you're worthy to receive. It's this incredible gift that there's no way that we could ever repay it. You know, this time of year, I think there's two main types of gift giving. You know, there's, there's like the gift for the gift gift. I'm going to say that again. The, the, the gift for the gift gift. Like last year, they got me a gift. And so now I got to get them a gift. So, you know what I mean? Or, or, or you go ahead and you keep like a backup supply of gifts. And, and if somebody, you know, somebody, somebody gives you a gift, you got your backup supply of gifts or the gifts that you got that you didn't want. And then, and then, you know, you just re-gift it. It's the gift for a give gift. Well, they got me a gift. I need to get them a gift. There, there's the gift for a favor gift, right? The gift for a favor where I, I really kind of want to win this person's favor. Or I want to win their, I don't know, I, I, I like this person and I need something from them. Or, 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 or maybe it's, it's you know, I, I'm going to, I used to work at this, this certain place and no, I'm not, it wasn't Pepsi. It was before that. <laughs> And uh, so we'd get this ham during Christmas, you know, and it was like just kind of thanking us for what we'd done. And, 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 you know, on Christmas Day when the boss calls and needs us to come in, he uses that ham as an excuse, right? You know, are, are you enjoying that ham? Well, we're going to need you to come in for a few hours, you know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's the gift for a favor gift. Like, I, I, I need you to, to do something for me. But then there's this, I think, this, this gift that we have been given, that the world has been given. I'm going to call it a grace gift, a grace gift. It, it, it's a gift that's so valuable, that was so unexpected. The craziest thing I think God has ever done is give this gift. Because, he, he, you know, I feel like through the major and minor prophets and we read the Old Testament, God was trying to show the world who he was through, through other people and through commandments and through law and through the letter. And, and he said, that's just not enough. I'm going to just have to come down and walk with him for a little bit. And so he sends his son, and, and it says if we've seen him, we've seen the Father, and he's the Word made flesh. And, and I tell people, I don't know a lot of this Bible, but the more that I know Jesus, the more of this Bible I'll know. <laughs> because he is perfect theology, right? He is, if, if God came down and walked, how did, how did Jesus treat people? Well, I know what the Old Testament says, but how did he do it? And he, he, he sends this gift down to us. Incredible. But I think it's a gift that comes with bonus gifts. And this is a whole other sermon. But it's a gift that comes with bonus gifts. Let me, let, me, let me read this to you in 1 Peter. It says, God has given gifts, look at this, to each one of you from his great variety of spiritual gifts. And so manage them well so that God's generosity can flow through you. And so we celebrate the gift of Jesus during this time of year. But within this gift, there's so many other gifts. Because within this gift, I believe that, that it, it tells us of God's purpose for our lives. And as we begin to unwrap this gift of Christmas, and that there's a God that cared so much that he came down and sent his son to, to give his life for me. And last time I checked, nobody was lining up to give their life for me. And, and, and he did this. And this is you know, more than a story. And as we begin to unpack the gift of this, we find out that it gets even better. <laughs> that there's gifts within this gift that he's... It, it, not only has he given us and sent his son, but, but he's taken the treasures of heaven. He says, I'm putting it in earthly vessels. And in this room this morning, I'm not looking at people. I'm looking at children of God who have treasure inside of them. Because of this gift. That this morning, that, that, that it's more than just a baby in a manger. It's more than just, okay, uh, unwrapping the gift of Christmas, which could take us a whole lifetime. But there's more to it. And I think sometimes it can get faded away in the busyness of the season and the gift buying and the gift giving and the lights and the trees and the decorations and they're all awesome. But I think familiarity sometimes can take away the real value of what this gift really means for our lives. And if you've spent time wandering around in the dark not knowing what you're supposed to do on this planet, you know how valuable this gift is. 
If you spend a lot of time pursuing things in your life that just kind of ended up in dead, dead end roads, you know how valuable this gift is. Because not only does it give us meaning, not only does it give us clarity that it, it reminds us that we came from somewhere and this is just a temporary experience here and we're going back to somewhere. Advent reminds us that God sent his son, that he was here for 33 years and he went back to heaven and he's coming, he's coming back again. It reminds us of that. It reminds us that you know, this body here is just temporary, but your soul and your spirit, it's eternal. It reminds us of that, but then it also, I think, it, it, it stokes this creativity in us to find out what are those gifts that God has put in you? What is this treasure that he's placed in your life? These gifts and these talents, I think this is the most important thing that we have to do on this side of eternity is to find out why God put us here, the talents that he's placed inside of us, and to use those gifts. And that's why we talk about growth track every week. That's why we have that. It's just a tool, but it's amazing to me. Pew Research did a study a few years ago. 70% of Christians don't know that, they, that spiritual gifts applied to them. They just thought it applied to the people up here, right? Doing the singing and the preaching, but it's like, no, no, no. This gift that you've received, not only is it your salvation, not only is it a light in the darkness, not only does it give you clarity and hope and peace and seasons of loss and seasons of suffering, but it gives you the reason and the clarity of why you're on this planet. And that's grace. That's God's riches at Christ's expense. That's purpose. That's, that's the real meaning. It's, it's that this gift, as we, as we look at this gift, and we, we, we know the gift is valuable, but, but the giver had your purpose in mind when he gave you this gift. In the things that he's put inside of you. And again, I, I think even apart, say you're not a Christian this morning. Okay, you're created in the image of this gift giver I'm talking about. And so he's put talents in you and valuable things in you. If you're a Christian or not a Christian, there are things in you that are from heaven. And wow, that's, that's incredible. That's amazing. That this gift not only gives light to my life, but then it reveals all these things that God has placed inside of me. It's, it tells us a lot about the giver. Because nobody knows you better than God. I mean, you know, you can sit down with somebody, you can live with somebody. You're, and I know you're, you might be sitting next to your spouse and you're thinking, I know them pretty good. <laughs> right? I've been with them a long time. But nobody knows you better than him. And so he knows exactly what you need. He knows exactly what he's put inside of you. I heard a pastor say one time, I'll never forget it, I like him, his name is T.D. Jakes, I know some people like him, some people don't, I like him, I'm a fan, and uh, he was being interviewed, and he was talking about, you know, what drives him, what motivates him, he's in cinema, he's a developer, a lot of people don't know that, they knock him because he's got a big church and think that he, you know, he's, he doesn't take any money from the church, he's a developer, He's been developing communities in Dallas for a long time. And then, then he's making movies with Tyler Perry. He's writing books. Like, this guy is, is pretty cool. And, and he was being interviewed. And they asked him, how do you do it? And he said, well, it's one thing. I don't want to die with anything left in me that God's placed there. Not one book. Not one business. Not one divine encounter. Not one church. And he doesn't look at gifts as spiritual like it's all about the church. No, God's put gifts in you to start businesses, to, to, to improve communities, to, to change lives, to, to be that teacher that speaks life into that kid that's got nobody talking to him. To be that coach that encourages that kid that just wants to give up. To be that nurse that's going to be probably the last person this, 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 this guy sees until he slips into eternity. And so that motivates him. And I thought, that's a good thing to do. <laughs> I want to uncover everything God's placed in my life. I want you to uncover all the treasure that's there. This gift reveals your purpose. It sheds light on those things. And then the last thing that this gift tells us about the giver, it's what it does is it, it gives us unshakable assurance in God's promises. Because this gift had been talking, talked about and prophesied about for a long time. 
The verse we read, Isaiah 9, 6, that was written hundreds of years before that baby was born in that manger. And so the church had been looking for this gift. The church had been talking about this gift. You know, it's amazing we live in, it's what's known as the dispensation of grace. That church historians and our church fathers have, have been talking about and prophesying about. We are living in those times. It's a beautiful thing, that, that, that this dispensation of grace, that, that things that were not, we didn't have access to as Gentiles, right? In the Old Testament, things, we have access to God, we have access to grace, the promises of God. But the third thing is, is, is this reminds me every day that God's promises are true. And, and when the world had kind of given up on this light that would come, and it's kind of the same probably posture now. It's been a few thousand years. Where, where is he at? <laughs> is he coming back? I mean, I, I sit down with folks way smarter than me that just don't think it's a reality. That it was, you know, it's just that he's not coming back. That's just kind of a story. I don't know. I think he is. And it seems like the world, you know, just, just it, it's moving so fast. We don't really seem to think about that. We talk a lot about the baby in the manger, but, but he's not coming back that way. And I I hope that this brings you encouragement because I know there's promises in here that have been given to you that maybe you haven't seen yet. That there's promises in your life that you're holding on to from God. That maybe that they just haven't happened. And this season reminds us, it gives us unshakable assurance in the promises of God. Let me tell you, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 says it like this, no matter how many promises God has made, They are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken to us by the glory of God, right? King James is all the promises of God are yes and amen. Why? Because of this incredible gift that we are celebrating leading into this Christmas season. That's all the promises. And so it reminds us, it gives us unshakable assurance because I think we live in a world that's shaky we live in a world that's rocky that that what can be shaken will be shaken the writer tells us in the last days that that things are going to be unstable that it's going to be constantly up and down and and so this gift just it, it it gives us a standing point it reminds us every year that God is faithful to his word And if he said it, he will perform it. And if he gave you that promise, you can take it and you can hold on to it. And that's hard to do, I know. David Wilkerson, he was a pastor at a church in Times Square for a long time. And uh, he wrote about, he called it the death of a promise. And that how promises go through seasons. And that God gives us things. And then it seems like right there when he... It's just time to give up. This gift came in 400 years of silence and darkness. And then all of a sudden, God just places a gift in a manger. And I want to encourage somebody that maybe you've, you've, you've had this promise from God, but you've given up on it. I was praying about this a couple days ago. I felt like God told me that nothing dies in him. It's only deposited. And we go through seasons of life where it looks like maybe the promise that God gave me is not going to happen. But we see this miracle every year when a seed is put in the ground. (laughs) And we know that that's the way it has to happen. That seed has to kind of break apart and that seed really has to die in order for life to come. And I think this season is a great reminder. And we feel it. It can be a hard season for some people. It can be a tough season but I want to remind you of the gift of God, his grace, his purpose, this unshakable assurance that we have. And there's the last thing. We talked about the gift. We talked about the giver, but what about the gifty? The gifty. That's a word, I think. So I, 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 I mean, my, my, you know, some word processors underline it with red, some don't, I don't know. I think it has two E's, y'all, you know. But the reaction, right? 
How a person receives a gift, when you, the, the way that they treat the gift and, and the value they see in the gift. The gift tells us a lot about the giver, but it tells us a lot more about the person receiving it. This gift, every gift, is a test, I think. And it can get lost in, in just the check in the box, and i got to get this one, that one, and this one, and that one, and this one, and that one a gift. But, but this gift is different. This gift is a test. Matthew 13 says it like this, the kingdom of heaven, it's like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And with all the joy, he went and sold everything that he had to get that gift, that, that, to, to buy that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. So he knew what he was looking for. And when he found one of great value, he went away and he sold everything he had and he bought it. So I want to just ask you a question. Do you recognize the value of this gift? Growing up, I was a big fan of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. <laughs> Loved it. I'd watch that show, and I didn't realize this until a few years ago, but in his, ho in his house there, where he's changing his shoes, where he'd come in and sit down, behind him is Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. And I didn't know why I always loved that painting, but I always loved that painting. And I don't know, six or seven years ago, I got the first opportunity to go see that painting. At the, it's at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. And I was by myself, I was up there to work, and I sat in the room where that painting was, and I just stared at it. And I remembered people walking into that room with their phones out, just walking right by it, like this. Didn't even see it. When Van Gogh painted that, he was actually, he had the whole second flora of an insane asylum. His family had admitted him. And he would, he would, you know, he's known, Van Gogh is known for painting the same scene over and over and over. And that's what he did with this one. He, was, he had a view out of his window, and he would paint the same thing every few hours. So the lighting was different. If you sit and watch the ocean, or if you sit and watch, you know, sitting in the woods or sitting out in nature, every few hours, the whole landscape changes. The colors are different. So he would, he would paint and paint and paint, and his family just thought he'd went crazy because he kind of did a little bit and when he had passed you know what they were going to do with all those paintings they were going to throw them away because they thought what, is it, what, what good can a crazy man what, what kind of painting can, can Vincent Van Gogh produce he's lost his mind and thankfully his brother decided to keep him and so that painting Starry Night is known as the most valuable piece of art on the planet now and I've been to see it three or four times and it always shocks me the people that just walk right by it and don't even notice its value what a gift it is to the world what a gift it is I mean it's incredible now let's think about this gift this morning that we've been given how many people just walk right by it and don't see it how many people, just because of the familiarity of the season, it's just, you know, the painting on the wall. And so I want us to pause and reflect as we're heading into this Christmas season. Just a few questions. Do you recognize the value of that gift? Do you realize the, the impact of that gift in your life? Because I think what this gift does at its at its very core, and then we're going to pray after this, is it reminds us of a God who just, he showed up. Out of everything we can talk about at Christmas, mighty God, wonderful counselor, prince of peace, right? There's all these amazing just benefits and blessings that come with this season. But he's the only God that I know of that showed up. And when we look at this season, I don't want you to look at this season as a funeral. I want you to look at this season as a birthday. 
because we're celebrating a God who still shows up. And this reminds us of that, that, that God is present in your life and, and, and we're not celebrating, a, a, it's, this is not a funeral service, this is a birthday party. <laughs> We're celebrating a God that's alive and well and shows up. And according to this word, he's going to show back up again. And everybody's going to know about it that time. And so let us look at this gift as we go into this Christmas season. Let us take inventory of what this gift means for our life, for our community, for those around us. Let's not miss it. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I want us just to pray for a moment. Father, we thank you so much for this incredible gift. We thank you, Lord, that it, it gives us a real glimpse of the heart of God the Father, that you're such a good God. You gave this perfect gift in your Son. And so, Lord, we pause and we reflect. We give thanks. That because of this gift, not only has it given us sight, but we see everything new now. Because of this gift, it's almost given us a glimpse into eternity. It's given us a glimpse into where we're heading. But this gift came and changed everything. And so Lord, help us to recognize this gift. Lord, help us to recognize and, and see and look for your presence in our everyday lives. That, that this gift, that this, the purpose and the grace of God and the promises of God are still alive and they're walking and they're talking. And through your spirit, you're speaking to us. That you're alive and well even now. And so in this season, we celebrate a God who is with us. And so, Lord, help us to not forget that. Help us, Lord, not to lose that message in the busyness of this season, in the busyness of life. Lord, help us recognize the value of this incredible gift that so many people just walk right by or don't see it. Let us pause. Let us reflect. Thank you so much. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen.